Hello, this is Dr. Shiva, and I'm running for United States Senate against Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts. Um, I want to share with you, as I promised, why it was right for President Trump to exit from the Paris Accords. The presentation I'm going to give you is a very objective one. Um, we need to recognize that many people who are supporting the Paris Accords, if you ask them, why should we have been in this, give me one benefit, no one can really give any benefit. In fact, I haven't had anyone rationally explain even one benefit. What I'm going to explain to you uh, very quickly here so everyone can understand in very simple ways is why it was important that Donald Trump got out of this why and why it was essentially going to support an international collusion to basically support the polluting of our environment and more importantly to basically tax all of us, businesses, small businesses, big businesses, uh, primarily a lot of small businesses and every consumer here with a carbon tax. And it's a very simple uh, ex exposition of this and I hope I make it clear to you. And obviously if you have questions, we're periscoping, you're welcome to join us. First of all, let me explain something very basic here. So in this circle, let's consider the fact that we have a lot of businesses here. These are um, businesses throughout the world. And these businesses, you know, are producing different things. Um, and let's assume these are typically manufacturing businesses. You know, they take resources, raw materials, they process stuff, and out comes products um, from these businesses, which typically go to the consumer. You know, there are a lot of consumers here. This is, you know, you and me over here. And we buy these products and we pay this company some dollar amount. Now, many of these companies, because of the manufacturing process, do put out carbon and CO2 into the environment. Let's call that broadly, you know, pollution, okay? Pollution in the term of CO2, all right? So these are these greenhouse gases that they emit into the atmosphere. This is, let's call it before the Paris Accords. This is what's taking place. Again, businesses uh, take resources, they create products, we buy them, and we pay some fee for them, and these businesses have been polluting. Now, has anything changed um, uh, uh, post the Paris Accords? And let's use the date 2030, as this is supposed to be an important date per the Paris Accords. So what happens here? Here again, I'm going to draw the same circle. We have the businesses, and let's put the year now, 2030. And what occurs in 2030? These businesses still exist, let's say. Again, these are the businesses. And they are creating products, as I mentioned before, to us as consumers. Same situation. This is again you and me. And these uh, consumers pay some fee uh, for these products. And guess what? They're still polluting. And I'll give you some numbers on this. In fact, they're polluting a lot more, as we'll see. But something very interesting happens. For the pollution they do, they have to now pay an organization, which I'm going to call, in double quotes, the IPCC. Uh, and this group uh, is composed of people like Al Gore, you know, people like uh, the Bushes, uh, you know, many people from the commodities market and essentially a global elite in here of quote unquote scientists. A dollar goes here, dollars go in, and these people deliver these people something called carbon credits. And what this allows these companies to do now is to pollute, but in order to pollute, they have to pay this organization a fee and th this organization issues carbon credits. In fact, it gets even more interesting. These carbon credits, if you look at the commodities market, the global commodities market, market, are these carbon credits are bought and sold here on this commodities market to people. And this generates the ability for this group to generate trillions, not billions, let me explain, trillions of dollars in new source of wealth. So these carbon credits were created by this group as a vehicle to essentially charge polluter something and this group has the potential to make trillions and trillions of dollars. So how did this all happen and what was the Paris Accords? Well, the front end for this entire organization, by the way, Al Gore uh, substantially at, at a certain point monopolized, had had access to a large number of carbon credits which he had accumulated and his goal was to have a payday by 
forcing these businesses in the future, around 20, post 2030, to buy these carbon credits. And if you actually look at this, the IPC's PR, I call it their PR machine, was what we call the Paris Accords. The Paris Accords was really their PR engine to get this out as though everyone needed to get on board. And what the US, if you look at the United States here, um, you know, put the flag here, the US uh, was being forced by the IPCC, by the way, this included Democratic establishment Democrats and establishment Republicans who were essentially telling the US government that it needed to create what we call a green fund. And this green fund, and I'll explain what this was really about, uh, the US was gonna have to put 100 billion into this green fund. And what was this 100 billion for? Well remember, the countries who are polluting really didn't want to be part of this. They didn't really want to be part of the Paris Accords. Why? Because they have to pay fees to the IPCC. So how do you get them to be part of this? So if I do this over here, what I call the influencers of these countries, influencers of countries. So for example, if you take India, you know, China, and you go down the list of what they call about 190 plus countries, Remember, all these people have influencers, you know, so-called advisors. This $100 billion number was going to be funneled through different NGOs to essentially pay off. And in fact, people had already gotten agreements that if they joined the Paris Accords, that they were going to get dollars funneled to them. This is why uh, people were involved in this. In fact, uh, uh, some of the WikiLeaks stuff came out, J. Ram Ramesh one of the key advisors in India. Originally, if you go look at it, he said that the glaciers were not receding. And later on, it was stated that the glaciers were receding. And in, the, in a recent email in WikiLeaks, he was actually thanking John Podesta for making all of this occur. So you have to really start thinking about what took place. But fundamentally, Trump wanted to exit this because I think Trump realized what was really going on. And what was really going on is this. The mafia of the IPCC was using the United States instrument, our Congress, our tax dollars, to funnel about $100 billion here, so we would pay off these people to join the Paris Accords. Now, let me just tell you, $100 billion is a relatively small amount because these guys were going to make trillions. So let me, let me follow this through again so you get it. Businesses today are polluting. Just to give you an example, China today pollutes of around 11 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere. Carbon, 11 billion tons of carbon. That's what they're doing today. By 2030, do, or between now and 2030, guess what? China's still allowed to pollute. In fact, China is allowed to go up to 22 billion tons, which means they're allowed to go 11 billion tons in carbon, which means they're gonna pollute more. They're gonna double their pollution during this period. No penalties. And that's how they got China to join. After 2030, there's going to be a big payday for these guys because they're going to be able to sell China carbon credits. I hope everyone's following. The bottom line is these set of 190, in many ways, uh, so-called influencers and advisors, many of them essentially are waiting for this $100 billion payday, supported the Paris Accords because they're going to be paid, and that's how they forced their country's, country's prime ministers and people to say, yeah, we got to join this Paris Accords. The reality is when you step back and look at this diagram, who really profits is the outlet who are going to make money on carbon credits as they fluctuate and, and rapidly grow in price post-2030. So a $100 billion payout to most of these corrupt officials, it's very well, well worth it for them because they're going to have a, a, a thousand percent, a hundred to thousand percent increase in profits. So fundamentally, uh, what Donald Trump did was he saw the scam, which is what it is. And fundamentally, what this does is makes liberal bourgeois feel good that they're part of the Paris Accords. In fact, the MIT president has said, you know, we have conclusive evidence that temperature has gone up. Let me just make it very clear that Hansen, the guy who came up with this temperature rating at NASA, you know, during uh, the 1950s to 1990, they used what they said was the average temperature 1998 during that period. That's how they measured the average temperature. And they said the average temperature was 15 degrees Celsius. And they predicted in 1990, uh, around 1988, that temperature was going to go up. So again, in 1988, papers are starting to come out 
saying the average temperature measured between 1950 to 1980 is 15 degrees and they're saying you know temperature is going to rise on the planet earth well what happens by 1995 1996 they find out the temperature actually in fact gone down a little bit it was not going up and somehow mysteriously around 2002 Hansen says yes the temperature has gone up and how did he get it to go up he got it to go up by saying that the average temperature is now 14 degrees he actually changed the goalpost before it's 15 he said now it's 14 and he said we're measuring 14.64 so what they did was a complete lie and in fact this changing of the goalpost was done in an email all of this is written in a beautiful article by Arvind Kumar in American Thinker called um, 14 is a new 15 or, or 14 um, is a new 15 exactly so you should go read it by Arvind Kumar an American Thinker he lays it out very beautifully but the bottom line is there is no conclusive evidence that the temperature has gone up if you look at the facts there this entire process really profits this group the reality is China is going to continue to pollute 2x 200 percent more India also gets to pollute from 2 billion to 4 billion in fact we're going to drop our carbon emissions from 5 billion to 4 billion so this entire process is really a big racket so all of us when I go back to this a consumer guess what in the future we're actually going to pay more for products businesses are going to be charged more so businesses are paying taxes each consumer's product is going to go up these guys up here uh, are the ones who are going to make money so extremely good that Donald Trump pulled out of this this was a patriotic thing to do and we need to start really uh, exposing the mainstream media and the elite academics who are all actually behind this thank you